in that first series. If they play as well as they did, I almost think that they could take the entire tournament. And Poike is going to have a second chance here in the lower bracket with his team. Acrolol, Fried Kitty playing that Rogue Mage Druid, a powerful composition. Lone Tar, the last Shaman. Will he be able to hang with the Druids? No, we will definitely have to see him in Poike caught into the Incapacitate. Infernals do get dropped out by Infernion right away. Looking to get aggressive, but really no one taking damage just yet. Rezu's trading out his Diffuse Magic to get out of Vanova. He's basically using that as just a magic break, just a root break, so he can play aggressive. That's how confident he is he can survive in this matchup. All right, Lone Tar Lava Bursting, getting aggressive as a team towards Fried Kitty. Rezu's getting some Fists of Fury, attacking Poike a little bit as well, at least to soften him up. In the meantime, team have secured crowd control onto all three members of Team Bronze Troll and got Unending Resolve, which is a powerful defensive cooldown on a very long cooldown, three minutes to be exact, which is unlikely for Infernion to potentially see again if Team can continue these great crowd control chains. Yeah, Rezus using the Storm Earth and Fire, as well as the Ring of Peace, trying to get some pressure rolling. Fry Kitty blinks out in the middle of the map. Uh, this looks like a good spot for Infernion to actually land some damage. And Poike's going to have to keep him alive. Incapacitate stops the healing for just a little bit, but a full Kitty shot on Infernion with a Smoke Bomb. Now Acro putting out huge pressure onto this Destruction Warlock. And if Acro can just sit on Infernion the whole game, it would be really scary for him to survive. You normally see a healer trinket out of that blind crowd control, but Lontar is saving his trinket to use in conjunction with Spirit Link Totem. If he doesn't have trinket, he can't use Spirit Link Totem. So he's being greedy, whoa, whoa, whoa. waiting until the final second to go Glider's Medallion, Spirit Link Totem, save the day. If he had trinketed blind, gotten polymorphed, he wouldn't be able to get out to do that. So that was good presence of mind from Lontar to pair those two cooldowns together, not get ahead of himself and trinket the blind a little bit haphazardly as healers sometimes do do. So good awareness, but their defensive lineup is starting to dwindle and Minpoike's team is setting up quite effectively in game one. Yeah, team's doing an excellent job so far. Infernion really doesn't have too many defensives left. Lone Tar as well doesn't have anything to keep him alive. So Team Bronze Troll might have to play a little bit defensive here, not just charging in across the map from Fried Kitty because if Infernion gets caught into a kidney shot, Frozen Orb drops down. It's actually a lot of damage on Ooh. this Destruction Warlock. Big swap now over onto Acro, but Lone Tar into the Polymorph. Infernion is vulnerable. Incapacitate gets traded out by Rezus. He's looking to find some damage on Acro as Fried Kitty's just been doing too good of a job kiting away and controlling the game. Rezus really can't find the damage he needs. And Poike is playing Feral Affinity, which is a very aggressive. He stunned up two members of the team and started the crowd control chain, and now following it up with another really aggressive choice, but he's whoa, not whoa, been whoa. healing for a long time, and Acro falls behind. I mean, Poike got aggressive. He played cheeky, just fell behind. Acro got caught in an off. He iron barks uh, before he goes for that Cyclone. He thinks it's going to be enough, but little does he know. He's playing against Rezus, the master of damage. Nice follow-up on that death call there from uh, Infernion out of that leg sweep. And, of course, Acro doesn't have his uh, trinket available.
find more opportunities to swap on Tumin Poik if he's playing that Feral Affinity still. Uh, we could potentially see him go down and Team Bronso could still be in this. It could come down to those swap opportunities all tied up. The gates are now open. Check one, two. You, you were just lying to me the whole time. Okay then, Rich. Uh, <laughs> crowd control initiated by Team with a sap on Lone Tar and Kidney Shot on Inferno. Inferno actually using his Gladiator's Medallion early on to counter push, counter push and it's a very aggressive maneuver on his part. And Team might be caught off guard. Rezus looked like he wanted to make a swap to Minpoike, but then immediately flying Serpent Kick to a different target. Fried Kitty's got Temporal Shield soaking up all this damage and then healing it back right as it ends and denying that entire initial aggression that Infernion tried to get rolling. Yeah, here is the nightmare of a Windwalker monk. You chase down a mage, he retreats back to his druid, and his druid just cyclones oh. you. But luckily, Team Bronze Troll, they are there to back up Rezus, allowing him to continue the pressure. That's why Inferni on the Lone Tar, they're constantly pushing on top of Benpoike, on top of Fried Kitty, because they need to help Rezus get out of these polymorphs, get out of these cyclones, deny the crowd control so they can actually get some damage rolling. Defensive ring of peace used there by Rezus to try and deny Acro from connecting to his target, but regardless, trades on ending resolve, gets a Chaos Bolt with it at least, trying to build some momentum with that trade as well, but not finding it. And Team are really asserting dominance here in game number three and looking likely to take this series with this kind of momentum. Rez is going for Paralysis, not looking for a swap. I still think that it might be their only opportunity at victory at this point in the match with how many cooldowns are available on the side of Team as they initiate another crowd control assault. Bash gets denied. Good spell lock by Infernion, slowing down the pace of crowd control on Lone Tar. Fried Kitty finally taking some damage and Team Bronze Trolls seem like they're going more all in. Let's get on top of the mage. Let's do as much as we can before we inevitably go down, but this is a risky move on their part. Yeah, I think it's smart. If Fry Kitty has to use all of his blinks defensively, running away, it becomes much more difficult for him to get the follow-up crowd control. As I say that he man manages to find the full polymorph on the Lone Tar. It's just spelled out. It's, it's he's not actually... Oh, he's playing the Healing Rain, so he preemptively dropped the Healing Rain there, and that has a chance if it crits to dispel magic effects. So nicely done by Lone Tar, getting himself out of that crowd control, allowing his team to push out aggressively once again. Yep, Infernion still target here. Obviously going to be trained down start to finish as a Destruction Warlock with almost any melee class on you. It's quite difficult to get something going, so let's see how well he can do under this type of pressure from such a high-caliber Rogue Mage. In the meantime, Team Bronze Troll initiating an assault towards Fried Kitty, looking for those Ice Blocks. Powerful defensive cooldown. If they can push through with enough damage, they may be able to find it. Minpoike denies with that Iron Bark place, reducing all incoming damage. Lone Tar with that Healing Rain Honor Talent adaptation to dispel Polymorphs off himself is a curious maneuver on his front. I believe it also does dispel the snares and the root effects. So very interesting choice. Trying to keep his team as mobile as possible to chase down the Druid. And they actually have a bit of a mana advantage if they can stay in it and keep this momentum. Yep, Lone Tar into the cheap shot. Is there follow-up from Fried Kitty? Doesn't look like he's able to find the Ring of Frost, but there's a full blind going out onto Lone Tar as well. Infernion doing a much better job. I think the extra offense coming in from Team Bronze Troll has made it difficult for Team to sort of find their stride. As I say that, big burst pressure coming in. The blind sap, Lone Tar, he has his trinket and the Spirit Link totem, but he's not going to be using it. Infernion getting really low. There's the Spirit Link totem. Lone Tar doesn't have to trade out his trinket, but that's a major defensive that Team was able to get out. Yeah, I mean, they've been getting major defensive after major defensive throughout this entire game. Infernals have been dropped, and if Infernion can get those soul shards spent, his Grimoire of Supremacy will stack up, his Chaos Bolts will hit incredibly hard, and Acro is trying to deny that ramp as long as possible. Will he be able to is then the next question, and so far Infernion has not been able to get a Chaos Bolt off during this window of opportunity and gets denied right at the back end of it. Team completely shut Infernion out of this fight. Yeah, look at Infernion, just pay attention to him waddling across the map, trying to stay on target, using his Demonic Gateway, normally <laughs> a very defensive ability. He just uses it to try to stay on top of the enemy. There's a Mortal Coil into Full Fear on him, and Poike, Acro could be in some trouble. No Cloak of Shadows, no Evasion, no Trinket, no nothing, but he has the Kidney Shot available Ooh. to slow down Infernion, but Acro's out of line of sight. This is a little bit scary for Acro, and Poike has to get there. There's a DR Incapacity coming in from Rezus as he's trying to take down Acro, but I think with the Iron Bark, Acro should be able to survive. Rezus, Ring of Peace Maybe. have been very Maybe. good in this game. Two Chaos Bolts connect. They stack up. Critical error for Team Team Acro at 10%. Shadow steps away to safety. Minpoike jumps, and Rich really wanted to tell Zico he was wrong there. He's raising his hands up in the air, but Acro's not going to go down. Team stay alive despite such a close call. Yeah, there's the Frozen Orb from Fried Kitty. He just wants to snare everyone up. They need to find their footing in this matchup. 
Acro has to get topped off. He has to stay alive. Mortal Coal comes in once again from Infernion. Finds a Chaos Bolt on the Acro. No feint. Still no defensives available for quite some time. The eight seconds left on the Vanish. That's a big one that he can use to survive. Full Polymorph now into Lone Tar, Ring of Frost onto Rezus. Rezus has no Diffuse Magic and no Touch of Karma. Normally, Windwalkers aren't the best target, Ooh. but they might be able to make a swap. Touch of Death, Fist of Fury. The most damage Rezus can do, but he's under too much pressure. He can't stay on target, and all that damage is going to go to waste, unfortunately. Lone Tar sitting blind. I'm surprised to see it. He doesn't have any cooldowns to pair by saving it. He trinkets a Cyclone, but it's too late. He gets bashed on the trinket. And Poike carry at the end of the... Ultimately, this is one of those returns of Infernion. Is he going to be able to extend this to game five? He has the pieces to try to keep him healthy to help out his team with tools like the Mending Bandage. We're going to find out right now. If not, team going to eliminate Team Bronze Troll from the tournament. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the gates have opened. Team Bronze Troll face elimination. Minpoike trying to keep his team alive in this tournament and fight for as many points as he can get. This is the first tournament of the Arena World Championship Series. We're at the base of the mountain for the entire year as they hike to the peaks for the World Finals later this year. They need to accumulate as many points as possible. If they get eliminated now, it will reduce their likelihood of qualifying. Yeah, it's going to be devastating for any one of these teams that does want to go and make it to the World Finals. Like you said, there's a stun on the trap. Uh, on him in Poike. Acro seems to be the target of choice. Bloodex now caught in the full kidney shot. That's the thing. Infernion, if he's left alone in this matchup, he's going to be able to do a, quite a bit of pressure. Bloodex getting swapped to, though, taking a whole bunch of damage. And maybe team, they just opt to crowd control Infernion, go after Bloodex in this matchup. He's going to be much squishier. Chaos Bolt's flying. Fried Kitty ducks around the corner. Acro in retreat there, avoiding that Infernal. The fiery rock elemental marching its way to the target. Ludix charges in. Lone Tar's playing aggressive with his team. And this is interesting on the Restoration Shaman's part. Usually we see Shaman's very defensive oriented, but Lone Tar is supporting his team quite effectively. The damage is quite high as well as Ludix is carrying Fried Kitty on low health. Vendetta gets activated, but Fried Kitty is still taking the brunt of this exchange. Mortal Coils go flying. Infernion needs to find a Chaos Bolt. Lands a spell lock him in Poike. Great timing. Fried Kitty, he's dancing with danger right now as that Temporal Shield will go off, bouncing him back. Spell lock is now over. Minpoike can freely heal. Lone Tar caught in crowd control, but no fear now secured. This composition looking a lot better overall for Team Bronze Troll. The pressure mounting on Fried Kitty, but Ludix is falling as well. Both sides, both sides under immense pressure. Yeah, Ludix in a lot of trouble right now. Lone Tar has to keep him alive. Infernion doing everything he can, spamming out fears. Full stun on him. Minpoike into a full trap. Fried Kitty could be in some trouble. Minpoike opting to trade out his trinket to get out of that crowd control. Uh, the fear on the acro gets dispelled quickly. Cyclone now on the Lone Tar. Ludix in a lot of trouble. Kind of all by himself with Infernion caught into the Polymorph, but he's charging in. He doesn't care. Kidney shot with the smoke bomb. Very scary situation here for Ludex, but a fear on Nifoike and a coil on Fried Kitty does slow down the crowd control on Lone Tar, buying him some room to actually heal up Ludex. Another spell lock on Nifoike into a Shadow Fury. Good crowd control chain initiated by Infernion into the Freezing Trap. Everyone in crowd control. Fried Kitty the target here. This could easily be an Ice Block if they can just get any amount of damage off. They need just a bit more. They get a fear off the back end of this chain. Nifoike has been crowd controlled. He might just be crowd controlled through the Ice Block if they can keep it going, but they drop the chain for a couple seconds when Poike gets some heal over time effects up and Fried Kitty will start to stabilize but another chain like that and Fried Kitty could easily go down. Lone Tar and Fernion or Lone Tar and Ludix have more cooldowns to keep themselves going and they might just close it out. This composition is surprisingly effective in Ruki. Yeah, Fried Kitty just not able to get away as easily as he was against Rezus. Ludix doing a good job and now they actually are turning their attention onto Infernion. I feel like going on a Ludix, it looks like a juicy target <laughs> going on a Hunter compared to a Warlock but leaving a Warlock just free casting fears and free casting chaos bolts is devastating. You have to put those kidney shots onto Infernion, which means you're committing your damage onto him. You want to control up the game and eventually take him down. Full fear, full freezing trap. Fried Kitty sees that crowd control and activates Temporal Shield, denying a huge amount of damage during that crowd control moment, which would otherwise be quite scary. Temporal Shield, an important cooldown. We've seen all of the mages using basically throughout the tournament, and they have to be preemptive with it and read the situation. Fried Kitty doing a good job in this position. Crowd control has now basically been nullified, but still taking a lot of damage. When Poike struggling, has to use Iron Bark just to start to stabilize, but even still, forced to retreat away. They're just on top of Fried Kitty. They may even get an Ice Plug if they can connect. Infernion trying to make his way over, gets Kidney Shot, but Ludix is just soloing him. It seems to me, if they go on Ludix, sure, they nullify some of his damage. Infernion's free casting devastating, but if they go on Infernion, then Ludix is just freely raining down pressure on Fried Kitty, and either member of the team seems capable of killing him, and if that's the case, this might be devastating for team. 
Yep, Fried Kitty still in a lot of trouble getting lower. Could be the second ice block. Temporal Shield gets used, gets interrupted on Arcane. No Polymorph coming in. He realizes without that Polymorph spam, he's gonna get taken down. He uses the ice block, gets topped off immediately by Minpoike. Lone Tar now into the Cyclone. Kick on Infernion, but Minpoike with no Trinket. Fried Kitty is very vulnerable. This is the Icy Veins. They need to make something happen, but really not able to pull out too much. Lone Tar, he still has his Trinket. Spirit Link coming up in 15 seconds. Infernion looking healthy defensively. Ludox as well. Team Bronze Troll, they may have found the answer. Iron Bark is going to be fading here shortly. Any crowd control in Minpoike, and Fried Kitty is going to be knocked out of this game. We're going to a game five. Ludix right on top of him. Minpoike doesn't have much to work with. The pressure is really starting to mount. Infernion is going toe to toe with Acrolol in the back line, trying to find some pressure over there, but it gets denied. Fried Kitty moves in with that frozen orb, trying to get desperately something going for his team. Not able to find it. Now Minpoike gets stunned. The crowd control chain has been initiated. There's not much left for Fried Kitty. Temporal Shield. Lone doesn't have the mana to remove it. It's a race against the clock. Is he going to fall first? Acro peels away Infernion. Ludix cannot race that clock. They still have pressure if Infernion can get in line of sight. One Chaos Bolt, two Chaos Bolts right in line of sight. Fried Kitty not able to get out and avoid them. He does manage to now start to stabilize with the Iron Bar, but he cannot afford to make a mistake like that as we've just stepped foot into dampening. Polymorph secured. Infernion trades trying to get aggressive and defensive at the same moment with that unending resolve, but his entire team is crowd controlled and he's trying to go toe to toe with Fried Kitty. It may not be the best opportunity, but he wants to go for it. He's getting locked out on every single cast, not able to get a Chaos Bolt off at this particular moment, and Poike gets freezing trapped. Ludix trying to carry the team. Yeah, and Fernion in that Kitty Shot going to be not going to be super effective. Shadow Fear on him and Poike. So he looks to put a little bit of damage there, but I think Minpoike is going to be completely fine. If you look at mana, Minpoike is way ahead. Lone Tar, obviously he's been purging in this matchup, putting his mana way behind, and now with Dampening, he might not be able to hold on for much longer. Fried Kitty still getting low, though. Smoke Bomb on Infernion. Acro doing everything he can to keep him alive. Infernion into the Kidney Shot. Cyclone on Lone Tar, Polymorph on Ludex. Beautiful cross crowd control coming in from team. Nice setup. Infernion, can they take him down? Fried Kitty just really struggling to find damage in this matchup so far. Acro trying to set him up, but the burst damage to the Frostbank just isn't being super effective right now. Ludox being all over him is able to slow down his damage. And now, once again, team having to play defensive. Fried Kitty kiting away, but Ludox still on top of him. And with Dampening ramping up, it's going to get dangerous for both sides. Lone Tar with no mana, it's going to be difficult to heal. But it doesn't have many cooldowns either, whereas when Poike has Iron Bark and mana, but no ice blocks. Triple crowd control, Infernion's in trouble. It's match point. They'll be going home if he goes down right now. And Poike needs to nail one more Cyclone. Doesn't manage to get it. The timing is off by just a second. And now Infernion stays alive for the Spirit Link Totem to connect, which means that Minpoike is going to be sweating. He needs to keep his mage alive for 44 more seconds. But with Infernals crashing down, I don't know if he's going to get that opportunity. Fried Kitty retreating away. Lone Tar Lightning bolting, knowing they have to kill him in this little window that they've got to stay in the tournament. Yeah, I mean, Poiki does trink it out there. That means that if Team Bronze Troll can get one more nice crowd control set up, a trap into a fear. Fried Kitty still in a lot of trouble. Very vulnerable. Has a cold snap coming up in 25 seconds. Second ice block in 45 seconds. If Fried Kitty can hold on for 45 seconds without using ice block, it's going to be a huge lead for Team in this matchup. Lone Shark out of mana. Fried Kitty's going to have two ice blocks. Icy Veins does get used. Kitty shot over onto Infernion. Fried Kitty looking for the crowd control he needs onto Lone Tar, but not able to find it. Really not getting too much value out of that icy veins in this exchange. Infernion trying to line of sight, but still getting low. The assassination rogue damage with Vendetta is proving to be too much for Infernion Lontar, trying to keep him alive, but he is completely tapped on mana. I mean, at this point, if it, Fried Kitty can stay alive 14 more seconds, he gets two ice blocks. At that point, it's over for Team Bronze Troll. They're going to have to interrupt Fried Kitty on Frost and burst him down to get a kill at this point. There's no other openings. They're so far behind. Will they be able to do it? Fried Kitty could throw, potentially, as an option. Chaos Bolt does do huge damage with that Malediction Trinket. It could also be devastating. And Poike in the back line, channeling Tranquility, keeping his team up and avoiding interrupts. Infernion desperately spamming out fears to get a Chaos Bolt off. Gets counterspelled. Fried Kitty ducks around the corner. Lone Tar right on top of the team, but he's got no mana left. Gets cheap shot. Fried Kitty blinks in for the Polymorph. Could be the game-winning play. Doesn't get it. Gets denied. And Poike now freezing trapped. Fried Kitty getting rushed down, but he's got two ice blocks to his name. He may have to just trade one right now. He's letting Ludix connect. Iron Bark stabilizes him. Infernion now getting pressured. 
trying to hold on to that unending resolve, but with a full polymorph security, he's got no other option. Drops that defensive to stay in the fight, but Maledictions are flying in. That's absorbing so much incoming healing from Lone Tar after this crowd control chain. He gets reflected. Was that a stolen Nether Ward reflect on his own mortal coil? Because I don't think there's any other thing that could have done it. And ultimately, team are looking to close here. Infernion doesn't have much left. He's hanging on the edge right now, trying to kill Fried Kitty at the same time. Who's going to go first? Seems like Temporal Shield denies the kill on Fried Kitty, and Infernion is just on the ropes. Yep, and Poike caught in the full trap, but he does have the trinket. Infernion still low. Lone Tar trying to play catch up in this moment, but at 26% dampening, it's going to be difficult. Lone Tar doing a good job, though. Infernion getting lower. Once again, Maledict connects onto Infernion, absorbing all of this healing. Lone Tar into a garrote full ring of frost secured by Fried Kitty. Infernion 3v1 situation. How is he going to survive this? Crowd control chain is extended with a polymorph into a cyclone. Lone Tar trinkets out seconds. into a DR vine. Infernion has seconds. to hold on a little bit longer. Spear Wings almost up, but it is not enough. Team closes out the series three to one. Oh man, you can see Infernion using absolutely everything. Pace, then you're just always going to be in a better spot in these tournaments.